Chris Lord Algy, Manny Mariquin, Tony Maserati, Andrew Sheps, they're just a few of the biggest names in modern mixing. And throughout their careers, they have developed some mixing tricks that they use to hook artists' audiences to listen to albums over and over again. In this live stream, I'll be breaking down some of the tricks that I talked about in my video called Sneaky Tricks Pro Mixers Use to Hook Listeners and answering some questions you might have. Now, let's get into it. All right. I think I nailed that transition for not having streamed in forever. Let me just do my checklist real fast. That way I know I didn't screw anything up. All right, cool. How's everyone doing? Thank you for tuning in on a, on a Monday for, for music stuff. <laughs> um, I'm barely awake, but I'm here and I'm super excited for doing the first stream on the channel. Um, I actually used to stream at my old job like three times a month averaged out to once every week but that was like almost two years ago so when i was like i'm gonna do a live stream i totally forgot everything i needed to know and i spent the entire weekend troubleshooting figuring things out because uh yeah you know that whole phrase if you don't use it you lose it well that was definitely me but I think I got everything working and if you can hear me and if everything's working fine so far, if you can just put a one into the chat, that way I know everything's working as is right now. And I'm also going to play a little clip of audio and if the audio also works and you can hear it, uh, a plus one. Meter wise, everything looks good. So. Oh, I might need to put on my headphones because I don't, I don't want to blur out my speakers uh, with the mic. I didn't, I forgot to test that part. So anyways, um, if you're familiar with the channel, uh, thank you for being subscribed and watching the videos. I really appreciate it. Started this channel almost a year ago, February 12th of last year. And I've been trying to figure out YouTube this entire year. And I finally got a groove, but the thing with making YouTube videos, at least the way I want to make YouTube videos is sometimes I can't go in as depth or answer as many questions. Cause the way I am and the way I've learned from my mentors and other people in audio is like, it's so hard to like try to write a script and film and try to answer everyone's question they may have when you might miss something. So I have been like really trying to think of a way to figure out how I can do that for the channel, for people who are viewers and want to know more and get more in depth. And I was like, Oh, I should try doing like breakdowns of the tutorial videos in a YouTube live stream and answer anybody's questions that might relate or something that like they can't figure out. And hopefully I can answer those questions um, in a more one-on-one -on -one basis without doing it one-on-one. -on -one. All right, let's see. I got some, what's up? Chocolate House Mafia. That is a really red icon. Ricky May Music Studio. Appreciate the plus one. Awesome. So that's why uh, this is the first type of YouTube live video is going to be a breakdown on some of the videos where I get a lot of questions to go further in depth. And this was the first video that broke out on the channel. Uh, sneaky tricks pro mixers used to hook listeners. So I thought I would like revisit it and break it down each trick per trick so everyone can see and if they have questions, then uh, I can answer. Now this session in front of me, since we have time and this isn't like a YouTube YouTube video, I can kind of break down this particular session. So I've used this one on a lot of videos on the channel and it's a pop punk one that me and my friend Charlie wrote almost two years ago. And it's been on the channel, like I said, uh, the CLA video is the most recent video or last year's video that shows a song. So the reason I picked this one is because it's really super simple. And honestly, I had the session like dialed in really easily with CLA drums and bass and all that stuff. So I was like, I'm just going to use this one for this live stream instead of trying to build a mix from scratch and obsess over that when I was trying to get the live stream going. So... Let's see, we've got the drums are, let me bring this over here. Here we go. I almost forgot about switching to camera. 
All right, now it makes way more sense what I'm talking about. <laughs> I am so sorry about that. Um, I haven't live streamed forever, so I have to get used to it. Okay, so the drums are BB drums from Room Sound. And the reason I chose this drum set is if you're familiar with the channel or not familiar with the channel, Bo Burchell was my mentor. He, like five years ago, um, we got connected and he took me under his wing and really helped develop me and push me to the next level. Got to work on a lot of really cool pro level records with him. And um, I just know I've worked so many hours recording with his drum set, which is the one in this uh, library. I just know the drums and I know the way he tunes. And there's just something really, really comforting about using a drum library that I I'm really familiar with. And if you're somebody who is new to recording and I know there's so many drum samplers out there and everyone like pushes them. It's really important to pick like one sampler that's pretty versatile and just sticking to it and really knowing those sounds. I know Superior Drummer uh, New York Avatar Kit is one that a lot of pros and friends that I know like to use and they use a lot. The snare gets used on a ton of records like that is a uh, pro mix tip. Uh, that snare, that Avatar snare is used on so many records. Um, but I'm really familiar with this drum set. So I use this a lot and it might show up in a lot more live streams. I just know the sounds really well. Um, I do like the tune track stuff a lot too. Um, and Perfect Drums is another good one. But for this particular song, I went with the BB drums because it was what I knew. I already went and printed all the tracks because I didn't want to worry about running virtual instruments while doing the live because I didn't want to have to troubleshoot too much. So let me just get rid of that. All right. So all these drums are being sent to this drums folder that I should actually organize better. I really rushed this one. Come on, man. What drum libraries do you all use? I'm curious. I know ML Sound Lab has a free one. I haven't dove into it yet. I like their amp sims. I think they're pretty cool. All right, so we got that organized. Let's close that up. Let's get this uh, a color. Oh, I hate that color. Nope. Okay, I'll go with that one. All right, and then we got the base DI. Uh, this base DI is punk bass from Submission Audio. Why are you using program bass and not real bass on a pop punk track? Because a lot of bass on pop punk tracks is MIDI bass nowadays. Not all of it, some of it though. Someone's probably like blasphemous. All right. And for guitars. So guitars, pretty simple. Well, let's see, let's make this active. So as you can see, there's like two leads, a uh, mono rhythm, uh, verse mono left and uh, verse rhythm left and right, and then uh, these guys right here. Why? Where is? Oh, that's why I didn't show it. Okay, so here's the rhythm di. Let me actually. Cause I know someone out there, if it was me watching a live stream, I'd be like, yo, what did you use? Okay. So I'll explain this move in a second. All right. Make active. All right. So this move right here is simply these guitars were pretty much lead guitar. One and two were pretty much the same. What the heck happened to my screen? Super weird. Sorry about that. Superior Drummer 3. Do you just use the standard kit on Superior Drummer or do you use a, one of the libraries? I have um, the Progressive Foundry, which is really sick. Uh, the symbols on that library get used a ton on records too. Um, they have. Uh, oh, what was the mixer's name? I'm even blanking on the name. I think this screen should be back now. Okay. All right. I haven't figured out exactly why it happens with my DAW screen going away. And then I have to like hit a button and it resets because I'm using an external monitor. Um, so if that happens again, I apologize. I'll try to figure that out. Um, I think I have the metal foundry for superior Gemmer three also. And then the avatar kit. 
and those are really all I have. Okay, so lead guitar one and two were essentially the same guitar with the same effect. Um, the only difference is one had a little bit more of a verbier sound. But when I was listening back, I was like, it doesn't justify being on a separate track. So I just threw it up in, uh, lead guitar two onto lead guitar one, and I just gained it up. And then I am automating this plate that I'll we'll go through later. So we can hide that. All right. And then I did not consolidate this guitar because I don't know. I wasn't thinking at the time. Maybe I wanted to leave one up. I don't know. All right. And pretty much all the guitars, yeah, they all have some iteration of the Howard Benson CLA. Oh, yeah, it's a trilogy now. Um, tonality. Uh, the reason I went for this one is honestly, I was just really, really lazy. And when I was making that CLA bundle video, I needed an amp tone ASAP because uh, I, I just needed to get a, uh, when I was, when I made that video, I was in like, I need to get a video done like once a week type mode. So just cause I, I was starting YouTube and I just wanted to be consistent. And um, I had this session previously and I, with the guitar tones, I was like, I want a Marshall 800 type sound, but I didn't want to like think it too much. So I just pulled up <laughs> the Howard Benson. Cause I was like, okay, that's, I can get pretty close in the ballpark with the Howard Benson type tone. And I just went through the presets, found the one I liked. I may have moved the cab a little bit. If that, and just moved on with my day. It was really that like that much of a decision. Um, and then I printed it. Like I said, I didn't want it to, I didn't, I, I just don't know if it was going to affect my DAW power in the live stream. So this is me also learning what I can and cannot do. But I think these two are virtually the same. Yeah. So those are like the main chorus guitar rhythms and I'll play that for you. Why is, oh. So those are the guitar rhythms one and two. Let's go check out the verse ones. I'm like, I, I really like a fat, chunky verse guitar, and that was exactly what was in this pop punk song. So let's hide and make that inactive. And again, I very much doubt these amps changed very much. I think if anything, I added more low end, possibly. Oh, I'm really push I'm really pushing the mids so I can get more of that uh pick attack for this verse. So let's take a listen to these. Nope, I don't want that. There we go. These are so overly compressed, even like just with this amp sim. It's like if you li listen to like the squishiness of the mids and there's a little bit of like crackling at the top end. I really don't mind it and that's because of the resonance i'm throwing up here it when the resonance is at zero so let me actually let's take a listen i'm in my head i'm in filming a youtube video mode and not in hanging out with friends getting to know me dork out mode so if i seem to jump a gun or two please let me know um i will slow down because i am it's really it's it's two different worlds making videos and then doing the live thing so i have to just recalibrate let me see what we got in the comments going on um i've been playing my electric genre duma for with the v3 head but i can't really find a snare sound i like oh is that that's an e-kit right yeah man e-kits are are tough actually the room sound stuff is um why am I blanking on Dave's last name? But the owner of Room Sound. So when we also another fun fact that Bo Burchell Room Sound Drum Library. I I went out to San Francisco with Bo to the studio and I was there the whole week with the company, like part of the team that we recorded those drums. So I got to see how drum libraries are made uh, behind the scenes. It's extremely boring shit, like super boring. Um, but back to case in point, uh, 
the room sound stuff is optimized and programmed with e kits in mind if you actually go look up the room sound drum library is on the youtube channel you'll actually see drummers playing on the e kit um so that might be something cool to check out if you haven't already because i i know drum libraries are supposed to work with e kits but they don't take into account like the little in, in intro sing uh, what's the word i'm looking for like there's very um delicate things with playing an e-kit versus a real kit and then using it in the programmed world and the amount of space that you need between the velocities and the hits um it's very different than when you program to when you play it's like if you've ever seen the midi grid on someone who's played an e-kit and looked at the the actual midi input like you, you have to record the MIDI input into your dot and you actually look at that MIDI input and then you go look at what you programmed. They're two very different things. And if you get one, two, three different drummers on that E kit and you compare, there's so many either like different variations of what happens. And with drum libraries, they're not all made the same. Their velocity windows are very different. So when you're coming, when you're trying to find a snare for your E kit or just a drum set to use electronically, it's so tough because you have to kind of find the drum library that best suits your style of playing or and, and or adjust the velocity intake um, input if the drum library allows you to do that. It's super dorky nerdy stuff. Sorry, a little I went a little super nerd on that. <laughs> that was that's a little bit nerdier than I can get in a video, but that felt really fun to talk about for a quick second. Um Let's see. Orchestral percussion, roots, most precious, death and darkness. How is death and darkness? Like I've heard a lot, a lot of people really like that one. That's the, I believe that's the two Matson one, right? When he left his other studio, he had, I think they recorded at his new studio. Um, I can't remember. And a couple EX expansions hip hop. Yeah. The snare sound does depend a lot on the overheads too. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So you both have e kits. That's interesting and cool. Whoa, latency. Are you talking about when you say latency? Are you talking about in terms of how f are you talking about the velocity window I was talking about? Or are you talking about in terms of the input? of which the E kit sends a signal to the drum sampler. Cause the latency is not really an issue. It's more so the window that actually might be another good live stream for me to do. Um, I kind of did a video like this back at my old company where I talked about not all drum samplers are made the same to explain this. Cause when I was, when I um, was working with Bo and like programming drums and triggering snares and kicks and toms like i was screwing it up at the beginning because i didn't understand the windows of velocities between different drum libraries and snares and how to find the sweet spot based on like if you're gonna blend snares from like a real kit and then also blend with a um, drum sampler a lot of people just throw 127 on the drum sampler with the combination of the real drums. And then the there's a whole there's actually more layers to it than how much I'm simplifying this to get like a really pro sound. But what happens is like you have the real snare sound like right here. And then even when you bring in the volume of the snare sample hit, it can kind of uh, cancel out impact wise the real snare. And that's when like you hear. When someone's using one shots, like the one shot almost takes over, even if there is a real snare in there, it's because the vol the vol the the volume variations and the velocity aren't in the sweet spot to blend in with the kit. And sometimes, even with the one shot, it's not just a one shot and done. It's like what is the right amount of volume for that particular part of the song, so that the one shot in like reinforces the actual snare, so that it sounds consistent, but because of the dynamics in which a drummer plays <clears throat> the velocity window they're playing can change for reverse because they're less excited so they're more laid back and then the bridge kind of builds up and then the chorus they're going full back into it you want to bring that uh like volume and the vo velocity variance back up um i want I'll, I'll have to do a live stream on that because uh when i when Bo was showing me all this stuff and then it all started clicking, it was like it all made sense on how 
like it kind of it's like a little bit of a gripe too because like we see pro mixers like and all these tutorials do cool things with program drums and sometimes with the kit is good enough they don't have to do that much more so when they're doing a tutorial it's like oh yeah i can set it and forget it because this particular song allows me to do that because it's like a pretty consistent performance but when you're dealing with like metal for instance or any type of genre that has a lot of uh like jazz if you even put samples in jazz because that's like some people might be like that's blasphemous um prog music Things that have a lot of dy dynamic play in the drums and interplayability, you have to really get those samples to fit just right. And you have to find the sweet spot. If you're not 100% sample replacing, you have to find the sweet spot. And that's where like you can, when people are like, oh, I can hear there's a, like the samples were replaced really badly on that drum kit. They're usually referring to like that, that marriage that wasn't really found. Sorry for the nerdy rant. <laughs> e kits equal illegal. <laughs> uh, nah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically, uh, uh, is, is it Eric? Yeah, Eric, basically, um, that's exactly it. You have to, if you, when you get the input of the MIDI drums, it's like super interesting how the velocity changes. And yeah, you do need to go in there sometimes and make it so your hit was a little bit harder. So when it hits the drum sampler, it's in that sweet spot that I was talking about. Because... You're 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 recording your e kit right, and then when you play it back, some of the hits not, might not be where you want them based on the sampler you're using, right? So you move certain hits to get them in that sweet spot. That's what I'm basically referring to is like not every sampler will have that sweet spot in the same place. So if like Superior Drummer is sounds like the kit you're used to and what you use all the time, so when you're doing your e kit, you know that okay, I like my hits to be in these little like ranges. So you start fixing and changing the velocities of your hits. Whereas if you went to go use like um, like a room sound library, you would probably have to change it to another place to get it to where you ideally want to hear the drum sound. So we're saying the same thing. All right. So this drum talk hijacked um, this live stream for a minute, which is dope. All right. So let's take a listen to this rhythm. So... Let's, what's this, 30%, 31? Okay, bring this down. That's a, uh, uh, okay, I'm gonna get on a guitar tangent. So, sorry. Um, I like the STL stuff because it has this resonance stuff and it allows it to sound more like a real cab to me. Like it has the woofiness in the air in the cab. Whereas without it, it sounds kind of, I don't wanna say dull, but it feels a little flat. And you hear how, as I brought up that resonance, hopefully, there's more um, beef to the sound. And that's like what it sounds like to me as a guitar player in a room with an amp. There's like a, there's like a woofy quality to it that you can't escape. And I know um, some mixers would be like, oh, just keep that out. I, I need that in there for it to sound like a real guitar for me. And then I'll just, if, I'll tame that with EQ later on. Because I'd rather have it in the source than not in the source. So... Toy, toy, toy. So that is that rhythm guitar tone. Hide and make it inactive. All right. And then this one. What were you? A little bit more bass, uh, less mids, less treble, no presence because I wanted it to fit. Because this guitar sits between the other two rhythms. So let's play it by itself. Course. Kind of loud now. Oh, that's why. Dork move. All right. So now that we know what the amp is, I was like, why does that sound doubled in the center? Eh, that's what I did. All right. Let's take a listen again, but I got rid of the amped one. Now I have the printed version.
So it, I wanted a guitar when we wrote the song. I knew I, I like having center guitars in my choruses. Um, I just, but it has to be like the, the um, it has to be kind of like a full range guitar sound that I'm going to do there. And the reason for it is I like to add again, like you saw more bass, um, less mids, less presence and kind of, a overdrive sound so that it blends in. It kind of helps support the bass in the center as more of, um, like, a crunchy tone but also because it's another guitar it helps on the sides as well to make the guitar sound like a full picture so that's why i have that guitar right there um let's see so bass is also on the bass yeah it's super simple um again i used this song for that cla video so I literally, the, the whole goal of that video was like, can I just use the CLA bundle to mix an entire track? And it pretty much worked. It was kind of crazy. So. This. 700 hertz ish is that 700 hertz nope this 1k boost broad boost is just adding more pick attack more presence and it also if you're listening like it feels like it flattens out the bass too so let's bypass it and play it again let's play it at a chorus Like right here without it, like the bass just sounds very like focused this way. Now it feels more flat to me. All right. So sneaky trick, use CLA's bundle on everything and you don't ever have to think about it. Oh, and then the guitar bus, just this guy right here. Let's. I gotta be honest, I don't really, I use the bass one a lot and the vocals CLA stuff a lot. I don't really ever touch the guitars one. This one, it's just because it was used in the video, I kept it in here and I didn't touch it. Um, but all the guitars are getting fed into it. All right, so this isn't really a vocal video, but we're gonna do some vocal stuff, but I didn't tune the vocal because I was, again, super lazy when I made the video. But I did use this is it the song in D major? I thought it was in B minor. I guess it's been that long that I just can't remember. Um, this Waze MetaTune plugin, uh, the reason I went for it is because it was super fast at tuning his vocal and auto-tune was giving him some weird sound that I just could not stand. Let me see if I can actually repeat that. Because at the time I was like, what the hell is happening? And it was the auto tune. This might crash. Because I decided it was time to upgrade to an M1, not thinking about all the plugins that are still not compatible with an M1 chip. Oh, God. I think it's going to crash on me. Well. Auto-tune crashed my rig. Let me go to main cam for a second. All right. Pro Tools not responding. Of course not. Got crashed. All right. Well, auto-tune, before it would crash my rig, it, it, it was just creating like a really fluttery tuning effect every time it tuned one of like his voice tends to really jump in certain spots. Um, I don't, uh, it's my friend Charlie who sang on it also, and his voice just with you, normal tuners just on auto doesn't usually work. Like I have to tune his voice with Melodyne whenever I've uh, we've done songs together, and I for some reason was just like, oh, I'm gonna try the slate 
tuning plugin because I haven't tried that one yet. And it actually worked on his voice and I was super surprised. And I was like, oh shit, this plugin is actually pretty dope. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for like a really simple and easy to use tuning plugin, I highly recommend the slate one. Like that, that one is worth buying if you don't want to do the subscription thing. I really, really like it. It has other features too. Like there's one feature on it where it allows you to, you can basically have better tuning, but it drags out certain notes or something like that, but it creates so much freaking latency when you do it. And I'm like, who, why, how do you use this in real time? It doesn't make sense to me unless you have like a super crazy powerful computer, but for practical reasons, it just, it just doesn't work. All right. So screw auto tune. We're sticking to what's this one called metatune what an original name uh, let me bypass i'm gonna play charlie's vocal without t the tuning he's gonna hate me for this but it is what it is <laughs> oh <laughs> All right, super pitchy, and then Metatune. So like serving just one kind of pie on auto-tune, it would just like really flutter out those notes and i was like oh i hate that i don't remember what i did on this oh i got a whole lot going on by the way i don't know anyone's feelings about waves but this studio rack plugin is absolutely free if you have waves plugins you just insert them and it's super sick it's one of my favorite ones okay this uh, this sheep's omni channel also is like super underrated and dope also all right, so I got some Manny American Delay, Reverb, and some Rbox. Okay. Hmm. How will it sound? Oh no, yeah, that's why I had it back there. And then all the other vocals are pretty much the same thing except for like some CLA vocal on the second one to make it sound different. Just like a call response. Um, do you guys wanna hear this rough mix balance? If so, just let me know in the chat say play that ish play that ish bro all right all right you guys convinced me no audio from pro tools okay that's good to know oh i know why it's because i had to restart pro tools so oh so you guys didn't hear charlie oh he's gonna be so happy that that worked out for him all right i know why it because I had to restart freaking Pro Tools. And the way I'm sending audio requires me not to do that. Is anyone into like live streaming and how to set this type of stuff up? If you can, if you want to put a plus one in the chat, I will tell you what I have going on because I really don't. I'm not going to like, I'm not one of those people who's like, I'm holding on to all the secrets. If you can tell by my channel, I'm all about giving out the secrets. <laughs> so it's kind of on brand. What's up, Ed? Welcome to music people doing music people things. And how do you know what Pro Tools is? That's crazy. All right. All right, everyone. I'm about to play some audio. Let me know with a plus two in the chat, 
if it's working for y'all. Let me first go back to OBS. I can't let go. Does, can everyone hear that? Because I'm showing audio on my meters. All right. That should be good. Oh, I see, Ed. You were just making a chiste or a joke, as we would say. You heard me say the word. All right, so let's get back to this Pro Tools thing. Okay, so if anyone's wondering how I'm doing audio to OBS in like high def fidelity, um, it's something that me I, we figured out at my last place of business. Um, so usually people run wire to like another interface connected to their computer or they route it within their computers. Um, but then it can create sorts of feedback and latency. So I'm fortunate enough to have uh, another iMac around. So I have everything connected to this iMac and then I'm using audio movers. If you haven't heard of it, we basically can send your, your DAW audio to anyone. And this, for, I first discovered this plugin um, several, I want to say like 2018, and it was great because when Bo and I were working with bands and doing mix notes and recalls, it always sucked that like when you're getting to that final, final mix stage where the mix is almost done, but you have a deadline also. And sometimes the band member or the band just can't listen. It would make you kind of be envious of the days of where the band would be in the studio, give you the final notes right then and there. You fix it, get the approval, bounce the mix, send it off to mastering and you're you can move on with your life. Um, Audio Movers has, allows you to do that. So we send a link to the band. They We press play. They're listening to it in real time. We're on the phone together. We have, we're muted. And then as soon as the mix is on playing, they're giving us notes. We're changing things in, the, in, the, in Pro Tools. And then we press play again. They're listening to it. We get the approval. We print it. We're done. There's no balancing back and forth or anything. So with Audio Movers, all I'm doing is sending it to the second computer and then that audio is going to OBS. So that way I know it's high fidelity, it's like zero latency, it's high resolution or whatever. Um, and I don't have to have any more cables than needed. Uh, but yeah, super nerd stuff right there. I got really dorky, you guys are welcome. All right, so let's go back to Metatune because you guys want to hear Charlie's voice without tuning. And I want you to hear his voice without tuning too because this is what most singers not most singers. This is what many individuals who have talent that needs help being raised up to more talented levels needs. I think that was a good way of covering my butt. So here's Charlie's voice. I can't let go. I guess I'll eat alone. Just don't waste my time. Yeah. You probably like it. Oh, so good. <laughs> My pride is in this pie. All right, so fun fact. Uh, I love pineapple pizza. I'm part of the pine pineapple pizza gang. And we were joking around, and then we wrote this song called uh, Pineapple Pizza Punk. So that's why this song is about pizza. I can't let go. I guess I'll eat alone. Just don't wait. You probably like anchovies. My pride is in this pie. So yeah, even when you hear those flutters, auto tune it, again. It crashed my computer, so I can't do it. But auto tune would like drastically change those flutters in the tuning, and it just sounded like I I, I don't know how it, it just sounded like a robot was trying to sing a part and went really high pitched. Like when you bring the format up on something. Uh, actually, I can show you a demonstration. It's super funny. Um, what's it? Alter Boy. So like with Alter Boy, I'm going to bring up his pitch really high. So it was like. 
So like little parts of his voice would sound like that with auto tune, and it just I <laughs> I hated it. It made me laugh, but I hated it. So that's why I tried Metatune because I didn't want to tune the vocals. Um, I was being lazy, and I had to film. So Me Metatune worked. Um, it's pretty sick. And on my screen, it's really hard to see. This is a little dorky thing. It doesn't read like T U N E. It reads like T U N A. So in my mind, it says Metatuna. Actually, wait, hold on. No, it says Metatune. Um, I was like, maybe, maybe the name is Metatuna. So when I read Metatune, I think Metatuna for a split second, and then my brain goes to the office when Andy's like, Tuna. So that's a little bit of how my brain works. All right, Studio Rack. So I got all this going on. And some C4, because got blew this vocal up. Some C1. If you ever want like a really aggressive punk sound vocal, C1 is honestly like the compressor secret. It just has this really aggressive tone to it, even though it's transparent. It's just really spitty. If you get that with the CLA 76 blue face, it gets pretty rad. And got some parallel stuff. I don't know what I'm doing here, um, but whatever I'm doing, I'm sure it's to make sure it helps. I'm just kidding. It looks like I'm just doing some saturation. Oh, I am also DSing. And a little bit of effect compressor. I can't let go. I Actually, did this reset everything? I can't let no, I just got the saturation and some other stuff. And then our Vox. Okay, dope. So. I can't let go. I guess I'll lead alone. Just don't waste my time. And then with this, I can't let go. I guess I'll lead alone. Just don't waste my time. All right, cool. Now we can play this track with this stuff going on. So you all have a better idea before we start getting to the sneaky tricks that I covered. Stop at the after this verse. I love the chucking guitars. take pineapple from charlie or me because pineapple pizza is the way put plus one in the chat if you're team pineapple pizza or plus two if you're pepperoni pizza uh i love both i love pepperoni with jalapeno especially that one's a good one okay so now we got the lay of the land and went on for super long about random stuff so let's talk about the tricks all right so in the video the i went the list of tricks that i went through was a filter automation trick manny mariquin uses that he picked up from mike shinoda of lincoln park which i use to this day on a lot of stuff that's really sick um andrew shep's infinite reverb trick that was on a vocal uh we'll go into that and then eric valentine's 1db automation on kicks 
Uh, that one's actually easy to do. We can do that one right now. All right. So we're going to go over the Eric Valentine trick first because it's simple because it's on a kick. So let's blow this one up. All right. All right, so the trick was the trick is really simple. Something Eric Valentine likes to do, and if you're not familiar, Eric Valentine has worked on bands like Good Charlotte, um, Queens of the Stone Age, Taking Back Sunday, a lot of stuff. He's pretty versatile. Um, and it's most of the projects he also produces, and then he would uh, mix. Smash Mouth was another was another huge one. I don't know how Smash Mouth escaped me. That was like Shrek. Um, but it was really simple. It's just like bring up the first kick on the downbeat of a measure or bar by one dB. So he would just automate that in. Now you could do it that way, or the other way I like to do it is actually this is just a personal preference thing, but I like to use a gain or a trim plugin. And the reason for that is if I want to change the amount of level, I only have to worry about doing it at the um, trim level as opposed to like highlighting an entire track and then bringing everything up. So well, the way I do it is we're gonna enable this guy and then we're going to bring the bypass on. All right, so right now as it plays, this trim plugin isn't on. For the intro, I'm not going to do it. You want to do it when it picks up, so. So like right there is a good spot. And actually, why do I have samples on? Bars and beats, minutes and seconds. All right, so can make it so that it turns on right on that downbeat right here. And then again, right here. Is this where I want it to go next? No. Actually, no, yeah, that's a good spot for it. All the 1 dB does is help reinforce the emphasis on that downbeat of that measure. Let's see. Look, Ed, even in my world, you have a fan. Griffin is your fan. Um, Hemrick, no, the song is not available anywhere yet. So me and my friend Charlie have a bunch of songs like this. Um this song we're planning on releasing in our like dummy account that we have <laughs> where we've only released one other song that was a cover. Um, once that one's released, then what we'll probably do is have this track, the multi tracks of this track available um, through the Patreon so people can download it. Possibly we've talked about it, but we haven't solidified any pan uh, uh, plans, but it isn't a uh, sandstone and the, Oh, what is the name of our fake band? I'm blanking on it, but something it's a, it's like pineapple something too. But yeah, so this trick is basically on the downbeat of each thing. You just want to go through and basically give it one DB of punch. Now it's really tough when you have ones like this, where you got to get in there. So the reason I like, again, doing it on the trim plugin is because, like, let's say as I'm listening to the, as the mix is going, I'm like, oh, you know what? I just want that one part to be a little bit louder. I can go to volume 
and then literally bring that one up by like 0. 0.5. And I still know that everything else that I have on the trim plugin is uh, the same volume. So just like nerdy redundancy type things in there. But yeah, for a whole song, like I forgot which one. There was a couple of his live streams that he's done where he just this is just something he does on courses, especially. And I was like, oh, that's so simple. And it just what what when it hits the compressor, the compressor is going to listen to low end first. Right. You have your bass and you have your kick. But then it also listens to center frequencies. Even if it's a stereo compressor, whatever's in the center is going to drive the compressor limiter first. So when you're pushing that kick drum, everything kind of pushes down with it at the compressor stage. So you get this like impact vibe with your compressor subtly happening. And it's not too much emphasis to where it kind of bogs the mix down when the kick's a little bit too powerful. So you're just getting enough emphasis that it's like the mix is kind of moving in a wave. If that makes sense. Um, so like this chorus right here. I already know you want that one. And then right here. And then right over here. But yeah, you basically go and do this. And if you're writing drum patterns that are similar, you can highlight, copy, and paste your drum patterns. But this is a sneaky little trick. I can't let go. All right. Got our first sneaky trick down. How cool are we? Just the coolest right all right so next up let's do this filter one it's really simple it's actually something uh it makes sense that like mike shinoda from lincoln park was doing this trick because it's very electronic type of mindset and workflow and it's really simple it's uh, basically the premise is you want to re remove enough top end so that Something sounds smaller, but it, it's not too audibly different. And then you remove that filter when a chorus hits and all of a sudden that top end that was removed just makes the spectrum sound bigger, right? And it's really, really subtle. So let's find. So we're gonna do it with drums. And we'll do it on the actual drum track. So let's bring in like a steep filter. In a shop that we only it's like you want to find the sweet spot to where it almost sounds like there's no filter on it. I think that's a good spot. So we're going to enable automation on this. We're going to turn it off because we don't want this on in the intro. So let's go back over here. because we go into that transition for that verse. So I'm just going to let it play. So about here. Oh, this is going to be perfect too because of that downbeat. Oh yeah. Okay. So we're going to bypass it so that it turns on. So the intro it's off and then it's going to turn on for the verse and then it's going to turn off for that chorus.
the drums just all of a sudden had the image just got louder but we're going to take that even a step further because a really cool place to do it is on the guitars also so i'm going to enable automation and then we're going to find a sweet spot it's So that should be a good little spot. So let's bring up this area. So again, we don't want it in the intro, but we want it in the verse. So what was the verse? Zoom in. All right. Just bring that all the way down, all the way, all the way, and then do that. All right, let's do that with the intro and listen to that. Let's do that again. a little bit just those filters subtly taking away that top end and then releasing it it like all of a sudden at least in my headphones hopefully it translates to everyone's speakers and monitors if you're listening on a phone it might not but it just opens everything up with that air I, can't let go. I, guess I'll I love love simple stuff like that because it just takes it to the next level um I got another one, another video in a couple uh, months drop in um, that has some subtle stuff like this, but also drastically changes everything. Uh, let's see. Oh, thanks, Griffin. Appreciate it. This is a super fun song. Uh, we have a few like this that I want to start using. That's why I'm doing these live streams so I can use these fun songs. Uh, all right. So we did the Manny Mariquin filter. Dope. All right. This next one. It's going to be a pain in the butt, but it's so sick when it works. Um, this one is a infinite reverb trick. I guess it's not what it seems. And it's going to work be and it's going to lead into the next the next one too. I guess it's not what it seems. I guess it's not what it seems. I guess it's not what it seems. All right. So the infinite reverb trick you need a reverb that has an infinite on it and i know dverb where's where's where is that at there we go i know dverb has it so we're going to bring in the gain all the way infinite reverb and we're going to do this at like 40 percent, and you'll hear the effect right now i guess it's not what it seems nothing can It's infinite. So general rule, let me kill it. Okay. So when you're doing this trick, there's a, you're going to need, it's going to require automation. And what you want to first do is, uh, you want, you don't want to do it on a send because the send gets really tricky with automation. 
also i find it's a lot faster and easier to do it just on the track um and that's how the demonstration with Andrew Ships when he did it, he did it right on the track too. Um, and this one's great for like anytime you have a vocal, most people like to do like delays and they kind of do like a little delay trick. But if you do that too many times in one song or in a record or an EP, it gets kind of boring for the listener. So this is just another way to like do this kind of extended effect to help with transitions. It works really great with um, at the end of a bridge when a vocal is like holding out a note and you want to like have that note kind of fade away while the next vocal comes in for like the chorus or whatever, that's right there. And the way we do this is uh, first let's automate. I'm in Pro Tools. I don't know if anyone else uses Pro Tools. Let me know in the chat what, what DAWs everyone uses. I know I did a poll not too long ago and um, it seemed like Logic was a DAW that many of you use. And then right behind that was, uh, I believe it was Pro Tools and then Cubase. Uh, and then I threw Reaper in there. And then I got a bunch of comments from people saying, I can't believe Studio One isn't on here. And I was just like, I forgot Studio One existed. Um, and if you use Studio One, I don't mean that any uh, offensively. It's just no one ever talks about it. Um, I see way, I see a lot of logic videos on YouTube. I've never paid attention to that before until I started on YouTube. And I was like, oh, there's a lot of logic videos out there. I, I, um, I tried using logic for like three months. Uh, it's all right. I'm just, I've been in pro tools for like almost 15 or 20 years now. If I try to use another dot, it just slows me down. And so I, I just went back to pro tools. I was like, all right, it was, it was fun. I still have it. So if I ever need to use it, I can, um, yo, When, when did I forget to put you guys back on to see the DAW? Shit, my bad. <laughs> oh, damn. So that means you guys missed the automation. All right. Let's backtrack a little because I done I done effed up. My second monitor that runs OBS is down here, so I can't see it in the corner of my eye. All right. Backtracking real fast. Everyone who's been watching, you're the real ones because... You did not see my dog. You were just seeing me and fuck my bad. I feel terrible. I, that, that will, that's a mistake that is less likely to happen in the future. I'm going to have to put this monitor like somewhere over here so I can see it. All right. So we're backtracking real fast. Tr the one DB automation trick that, uh, Eric Valentine uses, you find the downbeat. The hook. And you bring it up by just one DB on the downbeat of like the chorus section or like an intro, wherever you really think like the groove should move. That's where you want to put it. I use a trim plugin because I like to, if I change my mind later in the mix, I was like, Oh, I want it to be up by like two DB having to go and highlight like every trim automation in the track and then bring it up. And then it creates like two new dots or whatever. That just drives me nuts. So it's a lot easier to do it this way have the volume on the gain or trim knob to deal with. And then if I actually have to fine tune based on like notes, then I will go and do it on the track because then it's only going to be like a couple as opposed to like a whole track. It's a lot easier to manage or you can duplicate the trim and do it on the trim plugin. Um, but that that's how I prefer to work. It just makes my, my the way my brain works. It's a lot easier um, to work this way. The other one was using a filter on the drums so intro oh, you find you find the sweet spot and you filter out the top end just enough to where it doesn't sound like anything's missing but just enough of it's not there so that you can actually like it's more f perceived extension is what you're looking for when you're filtering out and you want to do it like in a verse in a slow build up anything that require anything where you want the dynamics to kind of come in <laughs> pro tools best the problem is avid on 100 avid is the problem man like avid only cares about mickey mouse and what i mean by that is they're so big into post-production world that, like audio is kind of an afterthought because they're worried about well also touring like a lot of stadiums and places will also use the avid stuff but for the most part media composer is a big part of Avid's ecosystem and 
Pro Tools is a small sect to that. They they listen to the pros basically in post production and what they need in Pro Tools, and then hopefully those line up with what the artists need. Even though they do a lot of marketing that artists find us like the best, it's like I've been using it for like twenty almost twenty years, man, and I definitely don't feel like you've ever cared about me. I feel like I'm just there. Um, but Pro Tools just I don't know my brain. It just makes sense to my brain at this point. And unfortunately, I paid to go to school to understand it and shit. So it is what it is. So, yeah, you're looking for the sweet spot. And then once the chorus hits or whatever big occasion in the song hits, then you bypass the filter. And then I also went and did it onto the guitar track so that when the verse guitar is played, I'm taking off most of the top end. And then once the chorus hits, that is then we can hear it. So like. I'm going to play that again. If you if you listen right before the verse comes in, you'll you'll kind of almost you'll almost feel like the verse shrinks a little bit, which is okay. Like you not everything can be big all the time. And with some automation, you can get the levels to really play in your favor, but this is just doing a quick filter trick. here right before the chorus like it's not it's not something that's gonna like oh my god something changes but you feel like something big just happened and that's kind of what you want the listeners to feel for like they know something epic just happened like the chorus is here but all of a sudden the chorus just sounds bigger and this is just one one trick to doing that with the kick drum automation trick um I'm really excited for the other video I have planned because it's like simple stuff like this that works really, really well too. All right. So next up is the infinite. Now, now, we're, now we are back to the infinite reverb trick because I was a dummy and didn't show everyone my Pro Tools screen. And they were just staring at me while listening to music, which is super uncomfortable to think about, but we're moving on from that. Um, good trick as well. Awesome. Yeah, this trick is like super subtle, but oh man. All right, so let's go back to this part because I think actually, what's this one? I need to find a good spot. Oh, that, this is actually a better spot because listen to how abrupt the mind ends. Let's bring it back over here. So this line right here, actually, let me... Bring it up more in Pro Tools screen. Let me make sure you, you guys can, everyone can see what I'm looking at. I'm waiting for my other monitor to sync up. My chat screen. Okay, I have it highlighted. All right, cool. So listen to this lyric kind of chops off right before the next lyric comes in. I can't let go. Just don't waste my time. So mind could actually extend out a little bit. Pineapples on my mind. We got it first. Mind. Kill it. Mind. All right. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to duplicate the track with everything on it. And then I'm going to delete everything to the sides because I don't need all the crap. And then I'm going to turn that off and we're going to come down here and focus on just that one word I want to extend out. Bite. And then infinite. Bite. All right hear how it goes on for forever and we don't want that so next thing is we want to enable the wet dry and enable this guy the actual decay itself um the way i'm changing lanes to really fast in pro tools if you are a pro tools user is to quickly enable so, uh, uh, any icon or control for automation is control option command click enable right there 
And then to see the lane is just control command click and then it shows the lane. All right, so. Night! So we want this to possibly turn off around here. Or we want the mix to change around here. I think that's going to be a good spot. So let's bring this here. I feel like, okay. All right, so we're automating the mix now. So if you look on the screen, this 30% is going to dial down. <laughs> Pineapples on the mind. Yeah, you could put a rhythm gate on there if you wanted to. I'm just doing a really simple version, but totally, if you got, if anyone know, has rhythm gates, like Ableton, um, I think Plugin Alliance has a really good one. I forgot what it's called, but they have like a good rhythm gate too that you can do, you can use on this too, so it like knows. But we're doing automation right now, and you hear how that goes on for forever. So the next thing we want to do is bring up this lane. And around here to here, I want to dial that down. Night. I might have to back this off actually. I think that was too sudden. So bring that over here. Yeah, that sounds like it's going to fall back much better. All right. So let's bring that back. I think that's the same as the other one. No. Okay. So I was over here. Let's do that without it so you can, I'm going to start it right here. Well, no, I'll play it again from the full thing. Just listen to mind and how it abruptly stops on mind and goes to the next phrase. I can't let go. I guess I'll eat alone. Pineapples on my mind. Just don't waste my time. And that breath, it, you need that for the attitude, but then it, it just sounds choppy, right? And then we bring this back in. I can't. Just don't waste my time. Sweet and salty makes the money. Now, let's go back to the track. I can't let go. I guess I'll be alone. Pineapples on my mind. Just don't waste my time. Sweet and salty makes Just subtle enough. And if you wanted it to be more, you could just automate it to be more. But that's just, uh, you know, you know, a little taste and it's a really, really cool trick. So if you're getting tired of using too many reverbs to do that trick, or you want to feed it into a reverb, you can do it that way. Um, if you do sends, you can do, I, I would suggest like a pre fader send so you can control the, the pre fader. Um, but yeah, so let's, for the next example, actually over make this over dramatic sounding. So we're going to bring this up a little bit. Just don't waste my time. Mind. Just don't waste my time. Sweet and salty. Mind. Just don't waste my time. So now. Are you still going? That's weird. Okay. 
So let me cross this one off my list now that Andrew Shep's Infinite Reverb is done. Tight. Two more tricks left. Um, let's see. Wait, Pro Tools has a rhythm gate? I must be tripping. Let's see. Well, it's, that's cool. I use Studio One. Pro Tools best. The problem is... Uh, okay, so I read one of these. Uh, Griffin, thank you for the compliment. I don't remember if I've already responded to that or not. But muchos, muchos gracias. All right. So next up. This one is a really simple one. But it always amazes me. Well, no, it's not simple because I didn't do it for the longest time because I didn't know you. I, anyone else, like, when you started mixing and doing writing songs, did you ever, like, think there were, okay, there's rules. But did you ever overthink the rules? It's like if you use a reverb or a delay, like, or a chorus or something like that, like, that's all you could do. Like, you can't touch any of it. Like you have to use the sound for what it is. Um, I know I did <laughs> for the longest time and I never thought to like, Oh, why don't you use a de -er before reverb or a uh, delay? So the S's aren't as harsh and they fade more into the background and then use a filter afterwards, like stuff like that. I never thought about until, um, you know, I started working on records and s snooping through sessions and seeing what people were doing. Um, and this one right here, I actually, I forgot where I read it. It was, it was either an interview or it was a sound and sound article, but it changed my life. It was like CLA was like, if a reverb isn't doing anything or a delay isn't doing anything that excites you, EQ it to do something. And I just remember thinking like, oh my God, that is such a simple, like there, the, we're, we're, there's the subtractive remove frequencies from a reverb so they don't get into the mix. There's but what about exciting that? What about accentuating qualities of that reverb that make you excited that you want the listener to hear? And that's what we're about to do right now. So. Bite. Bite. We can always, always do 8K. Bite. Just don't. Just don't mind, just don't mind, just always mind, just mind, 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 just mind, mind, just don't mind, mind, just mind, mind, just always my time. Sweet. Just don't waste my time. Just also, like, I think it's really funny that Waze has like three versions of an SSL one console now. They have this one, they have the old school one, and then they have the 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 CLA one. I just, how many SSL channel strips do we need? You know, because I know UAD also has their own. I just feel like there's a lot of SSL channel strips. Just find, 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 find. So it just sounds like a cloud. Find, find, just don't waste my time. Find, just don't waste my time. Oh, did you see what I did right there? Find, 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 just don't waste my time. Find, find, find. Let's get some wideness going. Just don't waste my time. And then uh, right about here. Actually, let's listen in the track. I'm sweet as the money. Just don't waste my time. Sweet. I think about here actually would be a good spot to start automating some 12k roll off. Sweet as a demon. 
So yeah, EQ the crap out of your reverbs and delays to get them sounding super cool um, in your mixes and throw some wideners and all sorts of stuff on there to make them fun. It's a sneaky little thing. CLA does a lot of. Um, the Bob Clearmountain does some cool stuff too with his effects. I kind of, I don't, anyone out there, Bob Clearmountain fans, like, yeah, Dave Patik. I cannot remember how to pronounce his last name. Um, but yeah, Dave. Room sound guy. Yeah. All right. So reverb EQ effects. And the last one is very, very simple. It's literally why. So I have another camera that eventually. So I have two other cameras that eventually will be all set and going. And one of them's behind me. So it's like a cool behind the shoulder shot. And then I have up here will go my cell phone that's over my faders and my monitor controller because um, I have some other live stream ideas. And I just love like the overhead console shots when people can see what's happening. And I hate when someone's on a console and I can't see what they're doing on the faders. It drives me insane because I'm like, what are you doing? Like, am I supposed to read your mind? I'm not a mind reader. Uh but yeah, the last one is CLA basically saying like he he was saying one time, like ride the faders. And I was like, I don't have faders. How do I ride faders? Like I have a computer with a, a volume control. And then it was like, oh, yeah, duh, like there's faders there. And by riding faders, he just literally meant something we've been doing this entire stream was uh, automation. And, you know, there's a cool spot right here to demonstrate like having faders. I know a lot of people hate on faders. Um and I, I, I admittedly hated on faders for a long time too, because I just was like, it's just, it's just a glorified mouse is what I would say. And then I got the fader port, um, cause it was like the most affordable thing that I could get my hands on. Uh, I haven't, I really, I, I'm always on the fence between getting the console one system or getting the SSL system. Does anyone who's watching have either one of those by chance? I'm just curious your thoughts. But the when there's different styles of balancing, first of all, but one thing is when it comes to automation, having a fader to use to automate is so much better than doing it with the freaking mouse when you're really trying to get fine tuned details. So like this part right here, like I already have the track on touch and where am I on my console? All uh, right, here we go. I'm over here. Let me bring it all the way up again. All right. So I didn't, I should have set it up. So you guys would be able to see my hand on my fader. Um, so like right now I'm going to do this pass. And I'm going to fine tune writing this particular guitar part in the song until it feels about right. Cool. And then like, let's say I wanted to do that with these right here with these rhythm guitars. I go to volume. And then go to touch and I have those selected. So let's back off a little bit. You always said you tried your things. Always said you would eat anything. I guess it's not what it seems. Nothing can take pineapple from me. Like these little tiny rides that I can do now because I have faders, like doing two rides at once. It makes life so much easier. So like now I want to do these two. First with their transition. But this is partly why Pro mixers, like you'll notice some of them have little like eight or 16 fader port 
in front of them, um, like faders. It's because automating passages through a song just changes everything. I when I would basically do static mixes in the past and maybe automate a thing up by half a dB or a full dB, depending on the part of the song. And it wasn't until I got the faders as like a I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna see. Uh it, it And I actually like started mixing with the faders and then automating with the faders. I was like, oh my goodness, like I cannot go back to not having faders. It would be very hard for me to go back to not having some sort of like fader system. Um, now, I will say like the fader port one system, I that one kind of that one has slowed me down because like moving. It's the same as having a mouse, in my opinion. It's like you only have one little fader thing you can do at a time. Uh, let's see. I think Brower said in an interview, get a controller with faders. So I did and love it. It's like feeling the bounce. Yeah, exactly. It's a, uh, I get why people call these like glorified mouses, but when you're actually like in the midst of like balancing and then automating the track and then getting towards the end, it changes everything. Like if you've ever watched like a C CLA mix video, he gets in there, he brings the faders up and he, he like, when he when the song is playing if like the toms aren't sticking out before after he's eq'd them instead of eqing them more he'll ride the faders like he'll do the punch in touch automation and then continue with the song because that automation is written right he writes it in the spot and then at the once he's done mixing completely all he's doing is doing final moves in case something needs that same exact touch because he was distracted and i there's so much more power in mixing that way with faders and once you actually start mixing that way you uh you really understand like it, it's like a higher tier of mixing like there's nothing wrong with drawing it in yourself and doing slopes and things but there's just something about the way speakers move when you're moving the faders as opposed to just like statically drawing the same thing into both sides when it's like your fingers are naturally going to move things differently based on you know human touch it just widens everything up let's see that's what i eventually want to do too you wouldn't you wouldn't play guitar with one hand so why mix with one hand yeah i mean yeah, you play guitar with two hands. I was like, I play guitar with one hand, but I'm thinking over here, not over here. But yeah, exactly. Like, it's um, it's just a different feel. I I hated faders. Like, this isn't a pitching. This is just like when when I was writing that part to the video. I just remember thinking when I read the article, like, what do you mean ride the faders? Like, I how do you ride faders? And in my mind, because okay, this is also why I, I like hated that sentiment when i was in audio school we had an sso 400 for a 4000 at the school and i remember um one of the mixers who would mix on that console he would ride his faders live it was fucking crazy um but basically all his tracks would go to um a mix bus and that mix bus would then go out to an audio track and this was back when you couldn't you didn't have an input track in pro tools unless you had pro tools hd and he had the input track on and he would be recording. He would press play on the console and then he would ride the sections of the song, print it, and then um, like go back and rebalance certain parts or punch certain things in. And I was like, why are you like in my head? That was so scary because I'm like, wait, what if like you have to redo something? But he was just so used to just like press play, just write everything out while it's printing. Um, it was like watching this person scoot back and forth on their chair was just like a sight to see. But I remember thinking like, ride the faders. How the, f like, I don't have a console. I can't ride the faders. And then when I realized, Oh, see, is just talking about automation. Like, and then I think when you first start doing automation, you're really scared. Cause you're like, what do I automate? What don't I automate? And then you realize it's like, there's no rules, whatever you whatever you feel is missing from that part or that song. That's what you automate. Like an experiment and practice and like, figure out what needs to move and change and automating between scenes is where the magic really happens in a song, I think. Um, but yeah, those are, that's the breakdown of the sneaky tricks pro mixers use video. Hopefully you all really enjoyed it. Um, next week I'm doing another live. I'm going to be doing a couple more lives in a couple months. Cause I really want to get the hang of it. Cause I want to do, um, a lot more of this interacting with you all, getting to know you all, uh, in the chat and 
not just be like a face in a video, but an actual person that you guys, if you have questions can ask and come hang out with. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing another live stream next week. I'll announce what it's going to be on Friday. It should be a really, really fun one. Um, but yeah, anyone have any questions before I bounce? Oh, and two, two things. Um, I guess some housekeeping. So I just got like the membership thing for the YouTube channel. So if you want, like, basically from what I understood from what I read and saw, it's like you get badges. So it's like a video game when you, like you, your character levels up. So I made some fun little badges. Like one of them is, uh, I don't have it here. So like, a new, anyone who just subscribes as a member will get uh like a trackball as their badge and then it goes i did i did fun stuff so it was like a trackball and then i think the next level up was like a fo <laughs> a focus right 2i2 i don't know why i just thought it was funny because like everyone has has had one of those at one point um and then it's like the waves ssl console plugin is the next badge in the next level up and then um a blue face 76 an NS10, and, and then I think it was like a gold record, a platinum record plaque, and then a Grammy. It, it, it's like silly audio stuff I saw. Cause like, it's like, it, it gave me like the YouTube option for the badges. And I was like, these are all lame. And then I went to go, tw I went to go see Twitch and other live streams. I'm like, so what are other people doing? Cause like, I didn't know that was a thing. Um, I guess I'm like an old man. And I was like, well, I'm, I, I like to make jokes and play fun. So I was like, okay. I've got to do something audio related that's super cheesy and funny, but like everyone would be like, this is so on brand for what happens at this channel. So that's why I did like the little icon badges of like all these little things and they're super dorky and funny. I love them though. Cause I was like, this is gonna be so great. Cause like one day I can see someone's name with like, it, it also shows up on the channel. If you comment, like your badge will show up and the badges go up in level for, for the amount of time. So like the, the trackball is the first one. And then after I think like two or three months, you get like the interface, I badge, and like the longer you're subscribed or a member of the channel, the your badge changes. And then I can see, and the way I set it up is like anyone who has a membership has priority comments. So like I will see your comments first in videos and respond to those first before anyone. So as the channel continuously grows, you get priority uh, response from me. And in the chats, like for live streams, they'll show up. Um, and then the emotes like, okay, so my buddy Bo, he was doing Twitch live streams for forever and I was talking to him about this stuff and I was like, oh, so I, I guess I can like do live stream emotes now. Like I don't under like, cause I I've jumped on his live streams, but I've never paid attention to like what happens. I just like go in there to troll him. Um, and he was like, oh yeah, you can make custom uh, emojis basically. So like I got a CLA boost 8k one in there. <laughs> I got a TLA spank it, um, Eric Valentine and a Sheps one. I, they're just dorky fun things. But yeah, if you, if you become a member, like you get these like fun little things. Um, uh, oh, costs, uh, Hemrick, I do have a mailing list in the description of any video. You can see, um, you can get like a free Argent metal sample pack and, or my referencing guide and, uh, you get those for free. I get your email and then I email once a week, um, just updating you on the videos. The, this channel also has a podcast. So I have a newsletter. Plug and Alley also has a podcast called the working in music sucks podcast. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple. And there's also a YouTube channel for it. Um, that podcast is me talking about things that suck about working in the industry so that you don't have to make those same mistakes. So it's kind of like, Hey, listen to me talk about things that I screwed up on. So you don't do the same things. So it's a very like personal career productivity type podcast, as opposed to like this one, um, in the future, there will be another podcast, uh, for plug and alley as well. And that one's going to be very different from that one, but that one's very personal. And then the mailing list and then costs on the mix bus, literally nothing. Um, I have Frontline giving me some level. Your order to come in. But no mix bus processing. Um, that's just straight up from CLA drums and 
all the other shit. I'm not a big mix bus person. Like I like parallel mix bus, but the reason I don't like to do stuff on the mix bus is, um, it actually, no, it depends. It, it really depends. I have like this thing right now where I'm not trying to do anything on the mix bus so that I actually, what I print is literally what I print. Cause if I have to do stems, then it always gets screwy. Like, stems are the bane of my existence when i had to do stems i would hate it because there's something changes when you're bouncing a track with mix bus processing when it's just the guitars when not everything's hitting it doesn't sound the same and i know some people have done like tricks where they're sending a sidechain signal to a compressor so it should react but it's summing everything to mono because the sidechain isn't stereo and it still overcooks it so you have to like dial in that fader that size change fader just right but it still overcooks it so i'm kind of like on the fence on mix bus processing and just like basically stem bus processing so matt getting your drum bus your bass bus your synth key bus vocal bus and guitar bus all sounding really like finalized tracks so when you print them that is the stem and then when it goes to your mix bus Maybe there's a parallel processor that I like to do. Um, and then once that runs through that, because there's no mix bus, mix bus processing and the parallel, it should be cleaner. Um, I guess a limiter could be considered final processing. But as far as like mix bus, mix bus compression, I don't know. I'm kind of chilling. on. I've been chilling on that lately. Um, I might go back to it. I'm just experimenting. Um, I have post-traumatic stem syndrome <laughs> just bouncing stems like it's the worst and then when the band's like oh we need this and you're like oh, <laughs> why are you messaging me um thanks cos appreciate it um let me think uh so i mentioned the memberships and henrik yeah you get a free guide i have another guide coming out very soon also everyone um if you join my mailing list you'll get the guide before it goes public on any of the channels. It's going to be a free, complete free guide. It's like 25, 26 pages. Um, it's called the magical guide, the magical guide to tone sorcery. And it's basically like a very confined synopsis of everything that I had to figure out and everything that I learned for just getting basic, good guitar tones. Um, everything you need from like the picks, the strings, um, how to practice a little, like there's a little tidbit in there and I'm practicing, but it's like a 25, 26 page. It's like, I wanted to just create something that just kind of solidifies everything. And then also in the book is like, uh, what I'm, what I'm calling the string gauge Atlas, which like based on the tuning you're tuning in and your next size, like what strings I recommend, um, for guitar, like if you're doing pop punk rock metal tones, it'll have like the types of amps recommended based on my own personal experience and you can click on it and it'll take you to like a website. Um, all the links would be affiliate, but you don't have to feel pressure to buy anything. It's just there in case someone does uh, buy something. It helps me so that honestly I'll, I'll be, I'll be blunt and transparent. I'm really, really trying to avoid doing any type of brand or sponsorship deals with companies on this channel for as long as possible because as long as I can keep doing this the way I want to, I can make videos that I feel like I can make the best video I can for everyone. And I don't feel pressure to like integrate something into a video. And the same thing with these lives. It's like, as, as long as I can find a way to do these things to where it's the best experience for everyone, that's the route I'm trying to go. So it's kind of like you're, you, if you guys can, I appreciate if you guys could like do, um, at least subscribe to the newsletter so that, you know, I can let you know what's going on, purchase through my affiliate links whenever uh, you need something. It, it says no extra cost to you, but it just helps me be able to keep doing this. And uh, yeah, I'm just really trying to stay away. Like uh, on the channel, if you notice for like a couple, almost six or seven months now, I've done no videos on like products or plugins, like, like one video on a product or plugin. Cause I realized very soon that doing those type of videos only, like I love audio gear companies, but when I'm doing a video like that, it's like, I don't know. I feel like I can just say this in 30 seconds. <laughs> like, yeah, this is tight because of this reason. Like, how am I supposed to make like a five minute video? And then also the brand has to be happy with the video. There's just a lot of things. In my last job, I, I, I worked with a lot of companies and brands and it was just like, 
it got to the point to where I just started not liking companies and brands because they say one thing and they do another. And there's a lot of good ones out there that are killing it and they're doing great. But there's for like, ev- for like, let's say for every 10 comp- audio companies, there's like one or two that are actually good and care about the end consumer. And the others are just trying to pummel, ev- pummel you with as much marketing as possible to sub to elbow you into buying their stuff. And what's really tough is like, Unless I use it, I don't want to talk about it. And the stuff that I do use, I'm like, I don't want to talk about it because like, you know, some of the stuff I have isn't cheap. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it took me a long time to accumulate a lot of this stuff. So it's like I when someone's there in their journey, then it's time for them to invest in that. Um, But I started I, I was like, I'd rather talk about like tricks and techniques that anyone with any plugin with any DAW can use and implement right away for results like the theory is what matters more when it comes to audio production. Cause like if you watch all these mixing tutorials and videos, a lot of mixers and producers are essentially doing the same things just in different ways and different dots. So that's why on the channel, I'm really like, you haven't seen a sponsored video in some time. It's cause like, I just, I'm like, nah, I don't want to do your video in that way. Um, but who knows? Maybe a company will be like, yo, we have this really great idea. And I'll be like, cool. That sounds like something I'm into, but yeah, just full transparency, like any support, if you enjoy the content and you can support in any way and contribute in any way as, as simply if you like no monetary obligation, like if you can't afford to subscribe to anything, that's completely fine. But if you can at least do my mailing list, I'd appreciate that so that you you're aware of everything that I'm doing. And when I have a mailing list, I know that like, okay, these are the people that no matter what I do are going to follow me. And I know that like, those are my road dogs. Basically that's how I view the mailing list. Like these are the people who are really going to like stick around and hang out with me and they want to dork out. And it lets me know when you participate in things, should I keep doing more things like that or experiment? And sometimes experiments fail. So it just lets me get to know everyone. And that's really how many 1176 plugins do I need? (laughs) I don't know. That's how I feel about SSL channel strips. How many do you actually need? I don't, I'm kind of like, why can't companies come up with cool plugins that don't exist yet? Like everyone is always coming out with like a new emulation of something. And I I get if you're a new company starting out that way, but it's like, I remember I used to want a distressor plugin. Now I feel like too many distressor plugins exist. And I am at the point where I'm like, I just rather buy the hardware now. (laughs) Like I'm so over it, but yeah i also like how many la2as do we need um so yeah let's see newsletter there's a podcast working in music sucks um if you join the newsletter you'll get the the new guide as soon as it's done before anyone else i have another i have like two other free ebooks that i'm working on that will be out later this year also and if you're on the mailing list, you get those before those are going to be free, but you get them before everyone else, because I just like to take care of the people on the mailing list. Um, and I feel like I'm forgetting. Oh, um, so like Patreon is a thing. <laughs> uh, I got a Patreon going um, right now. There's nothing in there. But what I'm thinking of doing is just like kind of like private hangouts like this. But instead of like it can be stuff like this where people send me a session and I go over it, or it can just be simply us hanging out, watching mixed videos that I like, I curate like a list of videos and we can watch those, but there's like different tiers that I put in there. One thing that I am going to do for select like 10 people is uh, at my last job, I would do mixed critiques where I would sit there um, and give like a 20, 30 minute uh, mix critique and just help people, you know, win that text, the test mix or take that mix to the next level for their, uh, artists and clients and things like that. And, uh, the top tier in there, they'll be getting coaching calls like that. Um, everything else is just pretty standard stuff. There's a private discord. So yeah, if you just want to hang out more, all that other fun stuff, there's just, there's going to be more ways to like hang out and have access and behind the scenes, scenes types of, uh, just bought one yesterday, just just to play in. Yeah. The stressor plugins, man. I have um I have a router which I really, really love. And I got I just got the IK multimedia one when it was free. That one's okay. 
But uh, yeah, I just kind of, I think I'm just going to go for one. So yeah, everyone, thank you for joining me in the first live stream for breaking down sneaky tricks pro mixers use. And I will see you all next week for another live stream. And you'll see what it is on Friday. Until next time, everyone. Later.